What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here, my name's Luke, and in this video I'm going to be continuing my Overpower Level 8 Sniper Zero playthrough. Thus far we've made it through a good portion here of the third campaign DLC, Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt. We still have to take out the raid boss though, and this raid boss is by far the hardest of any of the Borderlands 2 raid bosses, so we're going to pre-stack Critical Ascension in order to take him out. For those of you who haven't seen my pre-stacking Critical Ascension against Veracitous strategy, I will try to showcase it here and give you a good idea of what exactly I'm trying to do. But basically we're trying to get to as high as Critical Ascension as we can, take as much ammo into the fight as we can, and then kill Veracitous as quick as we can. Now it's not going to be incredibly easy to do that, but it does give us a much better chance to kill him uh, than we otherwise would have. I don't think it would be possible to kill Veracitous as Sniper Zero without pre-stacking Critical Ascension. So we're going to do it. Um, I'm going to use Deception to sneak through most of the uh, enemies here in this particular area. We got lucky there and got an Electric Witch Doctor, which is always fun. And because of that, we now have to figure out a way to acquire some health before we continue here. We'll get it here from this guy. You know, if the transfusion trails will come to us, which they might not. So we're just going to need to kill this guy. And then we can uh, move forward. Now, we are getting closer to the pinch point in the map where um, the Elite Savage Bridge is going to be. That's another place where you can get caught up running to um, Vorak. And it's, it's difficult um, sometimes to get past that. But if you throw your decoy in the right spot, you should be able to. Now this is going to be the only quest we take out during this particular episode, but it still may take a while um, getting the whole setup ready for Vorak and stuff. But this should be one of the shorter episodes in the series. So I'm going to throw my decoy right there. Hopefully the savages will allow me to uh, kind of get around them, and they did, so that was good. Um, and now we're getting pretty damn close to where Vorak is going to be, but not before we got another fabulous electric witch doctor. So we'll be looking to get some health back here on an enemy. And uh, none are currently spawned, so that's kind of disconcerting. But um, hopefully we can find one up here, get some transfusion trails off of it, and, uh, you know, not die. But we're going to die. Nope, we made it. Okay, so that's good. We'll kill this guy for um, Grim and follow through. Hopefully that will get us to this next area and the savages won't really follow us up into the scalian area now what we're looking for up here is a gallant scalian so sometimes gallant scalians uh don't spawn and that's really irritating when that happens because basically it kind of forces you to um reload the map and run back here which is a, always a big shame so hopefully that doesn't happen to us we did get a gallant scalian right away and that's really quite excellent so we'll see if we can drag him um Two gallant scalians, actually. We'll see if we can drag these guys over to um, where we can get them stuck. That's really what we need to do. Um, the place you can get them permanently stuck is right here. That's kind of what I want out of this situation. We got three gallant scalians here. So we got pretty lucky as far as gallant scalian spawns go. Um, perhaps we should lower it to one. It might make it a little bit easier to concentrate on. But um, perhaps having more than one will make it a little bit easier to get one or more of them stuck. Now, in order to get them stuck, what I usually do is just kind of stand here until they jump at me, or they'll sometimes fall into the floor. Now, it may take a moment to do this. Um, if that is the case, I am going to probably just uh, cut off the commentary and kind of fast forward through all of my trying to get them stuck nonsense, or maybe I'll just even cut it out. But I do want to show you real quick... Um, that I'm going to go ahead and open this gate here and drop the gear that I'm going to need to fight Vorak. I'm going to drop the legendary Sniper Calm, the Pimpernel in Fire, and also the Fire Bone of the Ancients. I am also going to equip the Trespasser, which we will need for taking out the Chief. That's my Crit Machine there, which I am also going to use to stack Critical Ascension, and then the Trespasser is right here. I am going to wear the Stockpile Relic and a Chaotic Neutral Rogue Calm for stacking ammo. All right, so I'm going to cut this off here until I have one of these stacked, but I do want to show you guys, or trapped rather, I do want to show you guys um, my strategy for getting them trapped. It's definitely not a science. I basically just bring a gallant over here, and uh, hopefully they get stuck. I just kind of stand right here in this area, and one of them will eventually jump over here and get stuck. But it can take some time for that to happen. So um, 
we'll just kind of wait for it to happen. If they get right here, you can kind of uh, execute them in. And then if they get kind of stuck like this, and they aren't really moving or attacking you, that's kind of when you know that they're stuck. So what I like to do to ensure they're stuck is, well, first I'm going to um, get stocked up on all ammo that I need. Maybe I won't have to cut anything out here. That would be nice. So get caught up on all ammo that I need. And uh, then basically start stacking and hope he doesn't move. So um, I guess I won't have to cut any of this out. That's good. So let's just go ahead and uh, begin getting critical ascension. Now, I am going to kill myself several times in this process. Critical Ascension is a pesky skill, and if you go into any menu, whether it be a pause menu or a machine menu, um, you will lose all of your Critical Ascension stacks, so be careful not to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and get as many stacks of Critical Ascension here as I can, and then we'll begin the fight with Vorak after that. So what I do here is I just put all of these 252 rounds that I can right on target and hopefully get up to 252 stacks of Critical Ascension. Ordinarily, I'll end up with around 245 plus, and uh, that's pretty much what you're aiming for. So now that I have all of these stacks of Critical Ascension, I'm going to kill myself. And I kill myself by throwing my decoy down and uh, letting my kunai kill me. Then obviously I hold X to bleed out, or whatever button you would push to bleed out, and um, I'll respawn. And at the point in time at which I respawn, I will have 80 sniper rifle ammo. And I will use that to get more Critical Ascension on this particular bad guy. Now, you don't want to uh, just jump off the edge and assume that that will get you more um, because on this map and a couple other maps where it's fairly easy to fall off, Gearbox or whoever made the DLC decided not to refill your ammo because it counts as a different type of death somehow in the game than um, it does on some other maps where if you fall into the abyss you actually do get more ammo. So there's a couple ammo chests right here. I'm going to open these. Hopefully we get at least a few stacks of sniper ammo from them. Be very careful not to uh, hit any of the machines there as you do this, otherwise you will lose all of your critical ascension. So again, um, trying to get more critical ascension here off of this guy. I'm going to kill myself one more time and uh, put another 80 rounds into this guy. And then after that, um, I'll kill myself once more, put like 40 rounds on him and then kill myself once more. That way I'll have approximately 120 ammo and then I'll begin the uh, Vorak fight with as much ammo and uh, Critical Ascension as I can. Now, Critical Ascension does have a lifetime timer, and so if you keep killing yourself, you will eventually lose all of your stacks that you have tried to build up because, like I said, they do have a lifetime timer at about five minutes. So, this will be the last full set that I put into this guy. I'm going to kill myself twice more, and then we'll start the Vorak fight. So I got up a little above 400 there, that's pretty good. Um, like I said, this next time I'm only going to put about 40 rounds into him. And then I'm going to uh, kill myself one more time. That way I'll make sure I'll have as much ammo for the Vorak fight as I possibly can. Now, um, we are going to need to get a critical hit on Vorak, most likely to kill him still. And it's very difficult to do that. Vorak has a very tiny critical hit spot. And it's very difficult to hit, so um, try to get another 40 on him here. A little bit more um, and now we'll kill ourselves so this next time that I come back to life I'm only going to uh, put one round on him and then I'm going to rush in there and uh, you know try to kill Vorak now it may not work hopefully it does if it doesn't um, we're kind of up shit Creek and we can reset and try again but um, obviously if we reset we won't have the ammo um, from the boxes and we did get 48 ammo from those boxes so we would have a lower amount of critical ascension which would not be good so i'll pick up that i'll pick up that and i will also pick up this and now we can go ahead and start the fight in order to start the fight i am going to uh just try to get a critical hit on him to start and that's good and then i'll throw my decoy right there now i'm going to throw out a couple slag grenades while he's kind of positioned against the wall here and then uh kind of butt up against him and try to trap him that didn't work, unfortunately, um, but that's okay. So after a little while, we do need to go ahead and kill the chief. So I guess I'm going to do that now. Um, and this will obviously piss Vorak off. And he'll go into rage mode and start doing his stuff. Um, some kunai and slag on him are not a bad idea here. 
You can also try to bore um, through some of the little guys. Um, but keep in mind, if you do that, you may uh, get rid of all of your second wind opportunities. We ended up killing him pretty quickly there. The uh, stacking of Critical Ascension went pretty much flawlessly, and we can go turn this into Hammerlock now. So, overall, um, that was a pretty flawless execution of a pre-stacking Critical Ascension against Vorak Kill. He is always going to drop either the Hawkeye, which is a pretty bad weapon, or the, um, well, at least it's bad for Zero. It's okay on Maya, and it's okay with other characters. But with Zero, other Jacob Snipers are better. Anywho, um, yeah, he's always going to drop the Hawkeye or the Interfacer, and obviously the Interfacer is a top-tier shotgun. So, overall... That went pretty damn splendidly. Um, if you you know don't have the quest currently active and it's already turned in, you can pop in and out a couple times and probably kill Vorak multiple times, picking up and then dropping the... Um, he won't respawn now because I have to turn in the quest in order to get him respawned. Otherwise, we'd try a second time. Um, that guy was really helpful. I'm going to kill him now just as a congratulations to him. Um... Yeah, you can pick up that, and you can go back in there, and you can kill him multiple times. That went really, really, really well. I do need to drop a couple things here so that we can pick up that gear that I desperately need um, for future iterations of, you know, my playthrough and everything like that. But um, also just because I like that gear, and I find it very useful for this particular application. So we'll drop that, and I'm just going to pick up my stockpile relic, my crit machine, and also my chaotic neutral rogue kong so now we'll save quit and we'll go turn this in that was pretty much damn near flawless as far as a, a vorak kill went um i don't i don't think i went into fight for my life at all i can't remember i'll obviously see it when i review the footage but that went very very well even the gallant spider ant got caught for us right away so um pretty damn solid we'll turn this in to sir hammerlock now and that's good stuff all right, so that's how you beat the third campaign DLC. For the record, I had much, much, much more fun, like magnitudes more fun with this particular campaign DLC than I did with the uh, second campaign DLC, Mr. Tor's Campaign of Carnage. So, yeah, that's that. And now I guess we can do either some headhunter packs or we can start the fourth campaign DLC at some point in time. We may be taking a short break from my Overpower Level 8 Sniper Zero playthrough. I have recently thrown these all into a playlist. Um, or we could also do those Slaughter Domes. Um, I have recently thrown all of these into a playlist, so in case you're interested in watching in sequential order, it will be a little bit easier to do that. That should be like uh, one of the top playlists on my channel. At least that's how I tried to make it. And as always, guys, you know, I do thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.